Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to have a more complicated example of to show you how to use mesh analysis by inspection method to solve for the currents in the circuit. Now we're not actually going to solve completely the, the, uh, the problem, but we're going to learn how to set it up. And that's the key, is to come up with the right equation. After that, it's just simply plugging them into a uh, calculator or a computer or a program in order to come up with the currents. Notice that there's five meshes right here, so therefore we end up with five mesh currents and we'll end up with a five by five matrix to try and solve for the uh, solution for the currents. First thing we we'll want to do is assign the mesh currents. So let's go ahead and do that. This is I1, this is I5. The next thing we want to do is find the resistance matrix. So find all the resistances for a 5x5 matrix. That means we need to find 25 elements. It's not as bad as it sounds, but it is a little bit of a work. Uh, what we're going to end up with here is a 5x5 matrix. We multiply that times the current matrix, which is the 5 I unknown two, currents, I3 and I5. I and that equals the voltage matrix, and we'll figure out what the voltages are in just a little while. Notice that there is one, two, three, four voltage sources here. First, we want to find the diagonal elements. We want to find R11, R33, R22, R44, R4, R4, which and means R5, we're going 5. to add up all the resistances in each of the five loops. For the first loop, notice we have four plus one plus three. That's equal to eight. For the second loop, we have three plus one, doesn't matter which direction you travel around the loop, you just simply add up all the resistors, which is 4. For the third loop, notice we have 4 plus 2 plus 3, which is 9. For the fourth loop, 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1. And finally, the fifth loop, we have 2 plus 5 plus 2, which is a total of 9. So now we have the five diagonal elements, 4, 8, 9, 10 and 9. Now we have to find all the off diagonal elements, but again, they all come in pairs. Whatever we find on one side, we'll have the same on the other side. We need to find R12. So we have 1 and 2, and they share a 3 ohm resistor between them. That is therefore equal to minus 3. Always put a negative in front of that. 1, 2, that would be minus 3, and 2, 1, that's minus 3. Actually, what I should have written is that R12 is equal to R21, which is equal to minus 3. How about R13, which is equal to R31, that is equal to, so between 1 and 3, notice there's nothing being shared that's equal to 0. So R13, that's 0, R31, that's 0 as well. How about R14? That's equal to R41. So we have 1 and we have 4, they do share one resistor in common, that's going to be a minus 1. Remember, always put a negative in front of that, so R14 is minus 1, R41 is minus 1. And finally, between R1 and 5, that's equal to R5 and 1, and again, between 1 and 5, nothing's being shared, that's a 0, so this becomes a 0, and this becomes a 0. Alright, now we go on to R2, R23 equals R32. Between 2 and 3, we do not share any resistors, that's equal to 0. We share a power a voltage source, but we don't share a resistor. So 2, 3, that's 0. 3, 2, that's 0. All right, now we go from R2 to 4. R4, 2 equals 2 and 4. 2 and 4 do have a 1 ohm resistor in common, minus 1. So 2 and 4, minus 1. 4 and 2, minus 1. Now we have R2 to 5 equals R5 to 2. Between 2 and 5, nothing's being shared. That's 0. 2 and 5, 5 and 2. All right, we're almost there. A few more. How about R3 and 4? That's equal to R4 and 3, which is equal to 3 and 4. They do share a 4 ohm resistor. That's minus 4. So 3, 4, that's minus 4, 4, 3, that's minus 4. And finally, oh, no, got a couple more. How about R, 3, and 5, which is equal to R, 5, and 3. Between 3 and 5, we do share a 2 ohm resistor, that's minus 2. Always put a negative in front of that. So that's 3 and 5, 3 and 5, that's minus 2, 5 and 3, minus 2. And finally, one more, we have R, 
4 and 5 equals R5 and 4, which is between 5 and 4. 4 is here, 5 is there. We do have a 2 ohm resistor in common. That's minus 2, minus 2, and minus 2. So now we have the matrix with all the resistor values. We call that the resistance matrix. We have the unknown current matrix. Now we need all the voltages. We're going to travel around every mesh and add up all the voltages. Around loop 1 or mesh 1, we have zero voltage sources. That's zero. Around 2, we have one voltage source, but we're traveling in the opposite direction. We travel from positive to negative. That's minus 6. For the third loop, we travel around it clockwise. We go from positive to negative here. That's minus 12. But from negative to positive here, that's plus 6. Minus 12 plus 6 is still a minus 6. The fourth loop, we have two voltage sources. We travel clockwise from negative to positive. That's plus 10. From positive to negative is minus 4. 10 minus 4, which is a positive 6. And finally, loop 5, we travel around it in a clockwise direction from the negative to the positive. That's a plus 4. So now we have also all the voltage voltages for each of the meshes. All we have to do now is solve this set of equations. There's five equations and five unknowns, and I would bet you that you probably don't want to try to do this by hand, so go ahead and grab your calculator and see if you get some correct values on here. But that's at least a nice example of how to set up equations using the mesh analysis by inspection.